Have you ever felt like you're being punked? Like, you know, the things that are happening around you are just too odd to be true? Uh, that's the way I'm feeling about these woke Olympics. I mean, who would have thought that the U.S. women's soccer team would go on to lose to Sweden? Or that the women's gymnastics team would lose to Russia? But the U.S. men's basketball team? I mean, these pampered, privileged millionaires losing to France? <laughs> Oh, it's not true. That's impossible. <laughs> no, right? I mean, that would be utterly humiliating. But that's precisely what happened. In this video, we're going to take a look at the epic fail for the woke team USA. We're going to find out just how hypocritically woke they really are. And stick with me to the very end of this video because we're going to find out that the blame for all this falls squarely on someone who's not even on the Olympic team. Can you guess who that is? Stick with me to the end to find out. You're going to love it. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. Great to be with you. As always, we are your daily fake news antidote. As each and every day, we provide patriotic analysis to help you to think better so you can feel better in these crazy and turbulent times. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe. But before we jump into things here, let's give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video. And that, gang, is Collagen, available on my special website, healthwithsteveturley.com. Many health experts now agree that taking collagen regularly can revitalize your body. It can make your skin, bones, even your hair look and feel more healthy and youthful. And if you click on that link below right now, you're going to get 51% off your order. So don't wait. Click on that link below today and get your own collagen supply. You'll be glad that you did. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. Yes, my friends. It happened. The woke Olympics has sunk to a new low in terms of the humiliating backfire on these pampered, privileged athletes with the utterly embarrassing defeat of the U.S. men's basketball team at the hands of France. The, men, the men's team lost 83-76, to which officially ended their 25-game Olympic winning streak dating back to 2004, which was, which was a different era. For basketball, we, this is a time back in 2004 we felt proud of our basketball team. Some are arguing we got one person to blame for the collapse of that enthusiasm, which we'll get into in a minute. The French team was ecstatic, of course, and God bless them for it. They played an amazing game led by uh, Evan Fournier, who scored a total of 28 points, sank a three-pointer in the final minute of the game, solidifying their spanking of the U.S. team. The French team obviously loves their nation, they love their culture, their people, and they consider it the highest honor and privilege to compete on behalf of their amazing country. Our athletes, on the other hand, <laughs> they ain't so proud of their country, and that actually starts with their 72-year-old head coach, Greg Popovich, a borderline illiterate, who claimed that we, quote, live in a racist country, despised President Trump, and arrogated to himself the privilege, yes, the privilege of lecturing about, yes, white privilege. No. Uh, you know, our country's an embarrassment in the world. Uh, this, is, this is an individual actually thought that when people held arms during the games that they were doing it to honor the flag. That's delusional. Absolutely delusional. But it's what we have to live with. You know, obviously, you know, race is the elephant in the room, and we, and we all understand that. But uh, unless it is talked about constantly, it's not going to get better. People get bored. Oh, is it that again? They pull in a race card again. Why do we have to talk about that? Well, because it, it's uncomfortable. And there has to be an uncomfortable element in the discourse for anything to change. You know, whether it's the LGBT movement or, you know, uh, women's suffrage, uh, race, it doesn't matter. Uh, people have to be made to feel uncomfortable, and especially white people, because we're comfortable. It, it's like you're at the 50, you know, the 50 meter mark in a 100 meter dash, uh, and you got that kind of a lead. Yes, because you were born white, you have advantages that are systemically, uh, culturally, psychologically there. And they have been built up and cemented for hundreds of years. People want to hold their position. People want the status quo. People don't want to give that up. And until it's given up, 
It's not going to be fixed. Now, forgive me, uh, Coach. I have a question. When are you giving up your position? When are you going to step down from the obvious privilege that you've exploited to become head coach in the NBA? <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Well, if you read some of the articles out today after that humiliating loss to France, there are plenty of sports commentators who would love to see Popovich do just that. They've had it with his, this narcissistic NBA coach who's an abject disaster when it comes to Olympic basketball. But unfortunately for us, Popovich is just the beginning when it comes to the virus of wokeness that's inflicted the U.S. men's basketball team. In fact, wokeness seems to stalk this team. When the team's roster was first announced, ESPN commentator Jalen Rose publicly claimed that the lone white person to make the 12-man roster was what he called a token white man. According to Rose, the lone white player on the team, Kevin Love, was on the team solely because Olympic officials were too scared to make an all-black team representing the United States of America. And then he added that he was disappointed in that. Why would you say that? Why would you say <laughs> Yeah, I know it was a breathtakingly astonishing claim, which, had it involved any other racial tokenism, would have been universally denounced as horrifically racist. But... What do you know? Not a peep of denunciation from the mainstream Marxist media. Sounds like privilege to me. By the way, you'll love a video I did on how CRT critical race theory is destroying the Democrats, where I feature a deep dive into what's really going on with Jalen Rose's comments. But again, it just goes downhill from there. The leader of the team, Kevin Durant, has a history of BLM activism. He was writing... Black Lives Matter in his shoes since 2014. He recently waxed eloquently about the supposed epidemic of police brutality against the black community. And Damian Lillard, the other uh, leader of the team, he's even more explicit in his BLM activism and has spewed out some pretty harsh anti-police rhetoric as well. And it's funny because the more activistic these NBA players get, the more they seem to lose on the international stage. In fact, Team USA, under the leadership of the woke warrior Popovich, has actually lost five of their last eight exhibition games, including back-to-back -back losses to Australia and Nigeria. That's gotta hurt! It's gotta hurt! Hurt! <laughs> now, you may be wondering who's to blame for all this, for this colossal fall of U.S. basketball. Well, it may surprise you that some are blaming one who's not even on the team, but indeed they see is ultimately responsible for the demise of professional basketball as a whole. And I'm talking, of course, about the one and only LeBron James. That's at least the argument put forward by James Whitlock at Blaze News. As far as Whitlock is concerned, you can blame the fact no one cares about the men's basketball team precisely on LeBron James. And that's because, according to Whitlock, James's legacy ultimately is that he spawned American basketball indifference. Moving from franchise to franchise, he exemplified the notion that the superstar is more important than the team. And as it turns out, even more important than the American flag. As a result, American basketball, once a place of pride and American exceptionalism, is now an object of total indifference. Why would we care about a group of players that so obviously despise us and our nation and its culture? This is the world of basketball that LeBron James has helped to create, and as such, he dropped the mantle given to him by the likes of Michael Jordan and Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. You see... What woke warriors like LeBron James don't understand is that the Achilles heel, shall we say, of cultural Marxism is that the public displays of contempt and scorn that they spew out against us can easily be redirected back towards them. They've been trying protests and virtue signaling as the ultimate moral expression, not recognizing that such denunciation and repudiation can work in two directions. These athletes disown our nation only to be shocked when we, in turn, disavow them. They publicly disrespect our flag and our national anthem only to be offended when we publicly denounce and turn our backs on them. You see, these narcissistic, pampered athletes assumed that protest was a one-way street. They figured they could dish out disdain and hatred with impunity 
and then they become utterly stupefied when the public rejects their hollow virtue signaling. Maybe they should consider dropping this whole activist fad altogether and go back to focusing on the athletic virtuosity that made them so admired in the first place. Maybe they're the ones who need to realize that in buying into all this cultural Marxism and BLM absurdity, they're the ones that have been punked. They've been fooled. Perhaps then they'll realize that it's time to come back and play with pride and with honor for a nation that is most certainly waiting and willing to cheer them on once again. Now, before you go, you will definitely want to check out my latest video I just uploaded on an anti-Trump rhino getting mercilessly booed off stage at a Trump event in Arizona. It's going to absolutely make your day. So make sure to click on the link and I'll see you over there. God bless.